You just can't play games with the Bible. This is our authority. Science is not my authority. God is my authority. And I better begin to treat this book like that. And I'm not going to question it and try to play games with it. It's going to tell me. I'm not going to tell the Bible what to think. Now, the sufficiency of Scripture, that's eroded by psychology. Well, you know, um, all truth is God's truth. You heard that one? Well, I guess all truth is God's truth, but it depends on what is truth. What do you mean by truth? The truth. Jesus said, you continue in what? My word. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, I mean, truth. I mean, it's you. You stand before a judge. You say, I promise to tell the truth, hold the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. That's not what he's talking about. That could send people to jail. Jesus says, the truth will set you free. What is the truth? Oh, well, you know, uh, Freud had some of it. Jung had some of it. The wisdom of the world. So we're taking from the wisdom of the world, which is foolishness with God. And we're going to mix that in with the Bible. And so basically what Jesus said in John 8 was, you continue in my word, you'll know part of the truth, and you'll be set partially free, but I can't set you totally free, because unfortunately the Holy Ghost, through ignorance or oversight, has left out a lot that is important in the Bible. But one day those new prophets of truth will come along, Freud and you and Rogers and Maslow, atheists, anti-Christians to a man. But the new prophets of truth will give you that portion of truth that's been missing from God's word, and at last the church will have the tools <laughs> to deal with people's problems. And you know how they'll do it? Through a new priesthood. Even worse than the Catholic priesthood. They got their own confessional. They got their own little ways of doing things. They got their PhDs. And you can't be a Berean. You can't check them out from the Bible because the Bible doesn't contain all the truth. But they've got a new enlightenment from Freud and Jung and Rogers. These guys who couldn't handle their own lives there. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Oh. Well, you know, God put it in the DNA. And this is the manufacturer's handbook. And some of us, if we got messed up lives, maybe we haven't been following instructions. This is the instruction manual. And we better pay attention to what God has said. This is Christian psychology. And I... You know, I've written a few things about that, and they really love me. But, uh, <laughs> but look, let's just be r rational, simple. If Christian psychology has anything of any value to offer, then it follows logically that the church was without the necessary information and tools for 1,900 years. Is that true? I'm asking you, is that true? If they've got anything to offer, it's new, isn't it? Well, then the church didn't have it before. So the church was deficient. The information in the Bible was deficient. I mean, you understand. Uh, you know, the Bible is all about people who had problems. They were hated and persecuted and, and so forth. And uh, like, uh, like Joseph, remember Joseph, his brothers hated him. His parents didn't understand his dreams. Uh, his brothers threw him in a pit. They were going to kill him. And then they sold him into Egypt where he was falsely accused of Potiphar's wife by Potiphar's wife of, of sexual immorality. He ends up in prison. The poor guy's got no hope of getting out. He's going to languish in prison. How could he handle this? Well, fortunately, there was a Christian psychiatrist or psychologist that, <laughs> that was able to come in once a week and build up his self-esteem and, and his self-image. I mean, you... You laugh because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Read the faith chapter. Read these giants of the faith who triumphed through faith. They were sawn asunder. They were hated and persecuted and killed. They were thrown in the flames. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, desolate, tormented, naked. They dwelt in dens and caves of the earth of whom the world was not worthy. How could they possibly handle this? We get some little bitty problem and we run to the psychiatrist. I mean, I think that the Bible tells us that one of Jesus' names is Counselor. Why don't we go to him for counsel?
Well, it's a form of materialism. Uh, it's the medical model of Freud. And they're trying to deal with man's problems without God, without the soul, without the spirit. Boy, I've got to stop. I want to just read you something. Because one of the things that has happened because of this is drugs. Psychiatric drugs. And I, there's a grave danger. We talked about it earlier. The brain doesn't think. There's a, there's a grave danger in thinking that the brain makes me what I am. That's the theory behind psychiatry and psychiatric drugs. Christian psychologists go right along with this. I want to quote you from a book that I recommend. It's not a Christian book, written by a couple of doctors, a medical doctor and a psychologist, Peter Bregan, David Cohen. The name of the book is Your Drug May Be Your Problem. The last 20 years have seen a drastic change in viewpoint regarding the ultimate resource of moral guidance. These men are not Christians now. Regardless of their religion or philosophy, many educated and informed people have come to believe that psychiatry and psychiatric drugs provide the best last resort. Indeed, such drugs are increasingly the first resort. It appears that we've replaced reliance on God. These are, these are secular scientists. Listen to what they say. I wish we had some people in the church who would say something like this. It appears we have replaced reliance on God with reliance on medical doctors and psychiatric drugs. This view suggests that most, if not all, of our emotional and spiritual problems are psychiatric disorders, best treated by specialists who prescribe psychoactive drugs. Our emotional and spiritual problems are declared to be biological and genetic in origin. Feeling fatigued? Take Prozac. Feeling as though you've lost your enthusiasm or direction? Take Paxil or Zoloft. Feeling trapped in an abusive relationship? Take Efixer, Lovox, or Lithium. Feel a little nervous? Take Xanax, Clonopin, or Ativan. Having trouble disciplining your child? Give the child Ritalin or Dexedrine or Adderall. These are secular scientists. Some theoreticians would urge us to look for biochemical imbalances. That's sheer speculation. Nobody ever investigated the brain and found chemical imbalances. I'll tell you that. They ask how they behave, and then they say they have a chemical imbalance. Besides, and these guys are so wise. These are secular people. Besides, whose, chemi whose biochemical imbalance are we looking for? That of the child that is out of control or the caregiver who has difficulty disciplining? That of the child who isn't learning or of the teacher who hasn't figured out how to reach this child? Whose chemical imbalance are you looking for? <laughs> All the talk about biochemical imbalances is pure guesswork. This is uh, Peter Bregan, MD, is one of the top experts on drugs in the world. Psychiatric drugs create imbalances. In modern psychiatric treatment, we take the single most complicated known creation in the universe, the human brain, and pour drugs into it in the hope of improving its function when in reality we are disrupting its function. Peter Bregan in another book said, we treat our patients in America with the same psychiatric drugs that they tortured them with in the Soviet Union. Okay? The notion that Prozac corrects, bio, corrects biochemical imbalances is sheer propaganda from the biological psychiatric industry. But disruption of the biochemical reactions in the brain causing severe biochemical imbalances and abnormal rates of firing among brain cells is a proven fact about Prozac. I have a friend who was on Prozac committed suicide. That cannot honestly be disputed by anyone who knows the research. Furthermore, we know that the brain's full recovery from the exposure to many psychiatric drugs may never take place. Indeed, we should suspect that any psychoactive drug, any drug that affects mental function, tends to produce irreversible changes in some, if not most, people. These are not my words. This man says, you better not give Ritalin to a child. There must be some reason why they will not accept you in the military if you've been given Ritalin. Hmm, interesting. The approach taken by psychiatrists is both simple-minded and destructive. They almost always assume that the problem lies in the hardware of the brain. However, it is impossible to reduce a person's emotional suffering to biochemical aberrations without doing something psychologically and morally destructive to that person. We reduce the reality of that individual's life to a narrowly focused speculation about brain chemistry. Think about that. 
That's what we've been talking about. Words are spiritual. The flesh profits nothing. The word that I speak to you is spirit and life. We are to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We must be Bereans. As I said, we've got a newsletter. You can sign up for it. But you check us out. The Bereans, remember, they checked Paul out from the scriptures. And they were commended for doing this. I've got to have confidence in the Bible. This is God's word. It is sufficient. I don't need something else for life and godliness, how to conduct my life, to be a happy, a fulfilled person. The scripture says rejoice evermore unless you tend to be depressed. Uh, In everything, give thanks. We should be thankful and happy people unless we have a biochemical imbalance. It doesn't say that. I'm sorry. It doesn't give us excuses. It says the just live by faith. Faith in God and in his word. And he will bring you through. Tragedy is that many Christians are biblically illiterate. Everywhere I go, I talk with Christians. They don't know the Bible. They don't know what it says. They haven't read it. They haven't studied it. They haven't meditated upon it. They haven't even believed it. I, I don't want to be too harsh, but I think that we have a lot of people in our churches. They've made an emotional decision for Christ, and they have an emotional attachment to a Jesus Christ who isn't even connected to the truth that he claimed to be. We've got to get back to the truth. The word of God. You continue in my word. You're my disciples indeed. You will know the truth. The truth will set you free. I hope this has been an important day for you. Uh, We've been trying to tell you the importance of the word of God.